Hello and welcome to another video on the internet amongst the zillions of videos on the internet. This one is interesting, I, I think, because it's about velvet reverbs and I've not seen many velvet reverb videos around so far. Probably because it's a relatively new technology, a relatively new DSP technique that the papers that I can find, it seems to have been developed in 2013. Um, I couldn't find many plugins or anything that use velvet reverbs back then but in 2017 the papers got slightly revised and enhanced and i think easier maths uh was easier maths better maths more more good maths was uh developed to um help people kind of work out how to build a realistic velvet machine a velvet reverb network because there's always way different ways you can approach this uh these kind of dsp problems but let's start at the top. Let's start at what reverb is. Reverb is the sound that you hear in a space. It's the sound of stuff reflecting off walls and continuing to reflect off walls. But let's split it up into two parts. As most users will know, algorithmic reverbs consist of usually two parts, the early reflections and the late reflections. Now, the early reflections are the... That was a silly selection thing, wasn't it? The early reflections are the parts of the sound which are first bounced off the material slash walls slash ceiling nearest the listener. So they'll be the initial ref the initial kind of echoes, if you like, uh, off the room. They're called the early reflections or the room reflections, as it were. And what that gets fed into in these algorithmic reverbs is the... So we feed the sound into this early reflection network and then that gets the sound from that little distribution of reflections gets sent off to another kind of reverb network which is, tends to be bigger and longer and be creating the space the tail the space that you're standing in so you can hear the sound bounce around longer and longer and those the outputs of those two kind of delay networks are added together and you get your reverb sound you can normally mix between these two kind of sounds which would make sense to give you control Sometimes you want the listener to be more in the room uh, or you want the sound to be closer to the listener. So you might turn down the late reflections. Uh, for example, it's just a one, one way of looking at it. And after that, we have convolution reverbs. And we've all used, I assume most of us have used convolution uh, at some point where, where convolution isn't always used for reverbs. You can use it for cabinets. So you might find your... Um, guitar cabinet in your dis electric guitar distorting plugin using IR's impulse responses to describe the shape of the cabinet um, to kind of colour the sound. You'll get like an EQ kind of thing applied to the sound. But in this instance, we're just talking about long impulse response files that do what we call a multiplication through time. They multiply the sound coming in to the convolution reverb with the sound that's in the convolution reverb continuously through time. And that's how we get the sound of like enormous caverns or caves that have been recorded um, or like enormous chapels or kind of weird water bottles or enormous crazy things that get recorded. It's basically just what we call a multiplication through time using techniques akin to FFT, FIR. If you know those words, you'll know what I mean. It's a, it's a complex process and um, the use of it itself, as I'll show you in a minute, isn't kind of as rewarding as an instant. Uh, it doesn't give you instant feedback like algorithmic reverbs. You usually have to wait for the impulse response file to be adjusted a little if you want to adjust it away from the raw file. And finally, we're going to look at velvet reverbs. And this is kind of similar to convolution in the sense that we are multiplying a signal through time, but we aren't, we're using, it uses a different kind of convolution, a different kind of multiplication through time, ultimately. Um, and because it's not an impulse file, it's not like a WAV file that's been recorded and created by a person, it's uh, algorithmically generated um, shapes. It's an algorithmically generated noise shape that's basically impulse impulses like, um, single samples above or below the zero line 
cleverly distributed, cleverly calculated using things like Gaussian curves and those kinds of things to create nice noise shapes that then applied to that then they apply to the audio signal using a kind of convolution style technique. The useful thing about this is that the noise shape tends to be accessible in real time so you can change it as it's happening you don't have to wait for the impulse file which you would normally do in convol in convolution reverbs to be adjusted so that the sound is then applied to that adjusted sound everything is kind of algorithmically created here it's like a cross between algorithmic reverbs and convolution reverbs it's pretty interesting stuff anyway one of the downsides is that it's because it's not you know anything like a real space you might see this as a downside. Uh, it doesn't sound anything like a real space. It just sounds like digital reverb. So you have to use other techniques to make it sound like a special kind of hall or a special kind of chamber or however you want it to be. There's lots of the, the few different uh, velvet reverb machines I have at the moment. I think they're the only, one, the only ones available. Uh, one of the, they have different levels of interaction, different levels of manipulation. So. We're going to look briefly at those as well. Let's hope this doesn't go on for too long. So, yeah, those are the three algorithmic, uh, three reverb uh, systems that we as producers use. Let's just have a listen to, like, what's going on with, say, uh, a basic early reflection kind of room situation with a well-known reverb, Arts Acoustic. People will know this. This is quite an old plugin. Uh, we've got, a, I've got a beat. It's... From one of the best eras in music ever, obviously. It's just an 80s kit. But let's. So, we, what we're hearing now is no room. Basically, we've turned the whole of the kind of reflecting room down. So, all we should really be listening to and for is the early reflections, the room design. And this particular plugin, the kind of. As you can see, if I change this thing which designs the size of the room. It's shifting these little yellow spikes around, making them further apart. The wider the room is, the longer the room is. The further apart those kind of delays are mapped. And you can kind of hear them bleeding around the edges. If we tighten it up, put it back. They, they all go. And these, for example, in acoustic, in arts acoustic reverb, the different room shapes are defined in here. So you can see this, these little yellow spikes changing. They define, these represent the kind of room shape. The initial reflections coming off the walls, going straight back to the ear. And we can change the kind of witness, the width of the room. There's a stereo kind of thing going on there. We'll keep it at 100 now. And we also have diffusion. Diffusion and density are the two interesting parts of this because with diffusion, I don't know if you can hear, so we, I'll make this, kind of try to make it as clear as possible, but we can hear that there's kind of, there's definitely delays going on there. Let's try and make it. Okay, you can kind of hear that's a load of delays, kind of very tightly defined. And if we turn up diffusion, it basically softens those reflections, possibly going through an all-pass filter or some kind of diffusion device. Diffusion, diffusion, device. But ultimately, they kind of softens. They're kind of clicky in there. And now they've been softened. There's also another parameter you'll find often in kind of algorithmic, algorithmic reverb plugins, which is density. This is basically the number of delays involved in the initial reflections. So as you can see, we've got it at a minimum at the moment. And we can kind of hear, we can almost hear each of those delays. If we turn the density up, it turns into a... Well, you can't really hear them anymore. This sounds more like reflections in a room, right? And then so that, this little collection of delays gets fed into another network which is larger and has more of a tail to it. 
So if we turn up the diffusion, we get rid of those. And increase the density as well. That'll kind of both of these are good for reducing the sound of the actual delay itself. You can reduce the kind of realness of the initial uh, reflections off the walls. So yeah, that's uh, kind of what you get with that reverb. Let's, what else have we got here? We've got everyone's favourite, very overused, well used. I don't know if it's overused, but it's very popular. And you can kind of hear the similar kind of things in this. We've got the... So here's where the early and late reflections are... Uh, diffusion of those reflections are managed. So if we just turn up the late reflections... It's difficult to hear, but we basically these early ones that the kind of it sounds like a delay. You can hear it sounds like a delay. If we turn them into more of a diffuse, you can hear them kind of turn into wafts, fluffy. That's tight, hard, clicky. They're turning. It's kind of softened now. But each of those little delays has been softened by this diffusion uh, this diffusion uh, diffusion setting and then we gonna adjust the diffusion of the late material the room reflections but yeah these are things that oh you can even highlight you can because you can exaggerate the initial room that say this plugin is creating. You can hear the as you make as we increase the size of the room, those initial reflections get further apart as the room gets wider and it takes longer for the reflections to come back to your ears. So yeah, these are the kind of manipulations you get in normal algorithmic reverbs. You can change the shape of the room and then that room sound gets fed into the other matrix afterwards that's doing all the grunt creating the space and I mean I just want to cover convolution and this is a special little file that's got kind of delay spikes in it this is kind of like what a velvet noise low density velvet noise kind of al um, algorithm the sound would sound like there's few delays but obviously there's no tail because it's not being fed into a tail it's just a few delay lines it's kind of like a, a room control but as you can see I've got the size right down here if I put the size back up again to you can hear it's just a delay what the size doing is it's re resampling the impulse response making it kind of like playing it further up the keyboard so it runs faster and it has a higher pitch to it as well, so you'll change the timbre of the actual convolution reverb by turning up the size. And you can hear, if I turn it up to that, the delays will be really low quality, because you've basically turned the file, like played it really low down the keyboard now. And all that kind of noise is the kind of noise from the file that's louder, because we've kind of slowed it down. But yeah, so this is kind of convolution reverb. And as you can see, if I like adjust it, this little line up here, watch the, watch the orange line, I'll adjust it. As the orange line is occurring, it is recalculating the sound to give us a new sound. And that's one of the shortcomings of IRs, I find, of impulse responses, of convolution delays, is that you can't dynamically change the file on the fly because uh, it will always be recalculating which is the kind of which is the bummer but we live with what we have correct right we live with what we have i want to move on now to the first velvet reverb this is velvet machine i bought this ages ago i think when it almost when it first came out because it just seems so interesting and this is what it is we've got interesting kind of knobs you won't normally find on well just an interesting cut down selection of knobs that you won't find on uh, that would do different stuff to a normal algorithmic revert, kind of. So we've got this, which is like a volume 
This is basically the volume. So we can we can make things, we can make the sounds blur in. At the moment, we've got a really low density. Look, four impulses per second is what the measure of this, this um, particular velvet noise algorithm does. So if I turn it up, those sounds like delays at the moment. We'll get, we'll get more of them. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. I mean, it sounds like a note. It sounds like a brrr, like a pitched note, but it, because it's so because there's randomness involved in the distribution of these impulses, there's a certain noisiness to it as well. And we can go up to. So in this particular plugin, they've allowed for I think maybe two thousand impulses per second, which gives us nice smoothness. And we can change the do, ma do crazy things with it, make it go backwards. Mad, isn't it? I love it. I mean, it's insane, isn't it? This is algorithmically generated impulse response file. And I mean, I love this. It's just for great. It's just great for adding like crazy bits of colour to to your noises. Nice and simple, pretty cheap. Love it. Highly recommended if you want to start on your velvet reverb journey in a simple fashion. This one has been out a while as well. Oh, actually, we're just gonna um, just look at the. Just look at the Velvet Machine guide. It says here, Velvet Machine is an audio effect based on real-time convolution with enveloped velvet noise. Enveloped or enveloped? Let's debate in the chat. With enveloped velvet noise. I mean, yeah, you can look at the manual, but that's what it does. It uses the velvet noise algorithm. And this next one I'm going to look at is AP. AP verb. And this also generates reverb from thousands of semi-randomly spaced delays inspired by a recently invented form of noise called Velvet Noise. So these two, as far as I know, are the only commercial plugins that use Velvet Noise. Um, the AP Verb is crazy powerful. Look at the interface, you can do loads of crazy things with it. Um, gonna have a little look at that in a second. Highly recommended if you want crazy control over the most insane kind of reverb set of DS, the reverb kind of DSP algorithms. Madness. Velvet is beautiful, simple implementation of um, Velvet Noise. It's got, it's cool. It's got this multi breakpoint thing to, that gives you the sort of volume of the uh, experience. And it's, I mean, it's nice and simple, but it's just beautifully powerful. It's a really lovely, it's a really lovely implementation of velvet noise maths, is what I would say it is. But let's move on to the sound of AP verb. So this is a crazy verb because again, let's turn the level down. Let's just turn, so the level, this is two parts. Again, we've got the reflections in the body. This is an interesting implementation of velvet noise because what we have here is kind of almost an algorithmic velvet noise world. So we've got a little room here that is like normal algorithmic reverbs, a little space that has a few different parameters that we can define. So let's just make it extreme settings. So we've got no body, but we can hear those little reflections that are bouncing around as defined as part of this little reflections setting, which was sparse. Let's check out normal. There's a few more there. And in dense. Kind of more evenly spread by the looks of it, aren't they? Whereas normal's a bit empty and then gets closer together. Interesting, isn't it? I wonder where they got these uh, observations from. But let's stick with normal for the moment. And then we can look at body. 
and what this is is where the power is basically this is where this density knob here is kind of how many how many impulse points there are in the sort of room reflections so we'll turn that up I love the uh, the graphics in this Alash so we're going to turn the level up of all this sort of tail the tail of the signal can turn down so now we're only listening to the body the room reflection the kind of space and the kind of distance you can hear that's like a sounds like a really long badly configured delay right that's all changed by this little setting up here and if we turn the density up see this line here we can control all this with breakpoint envelope oh, oh there's a lovely bit of digital fizz there when we increase the uh, initial density Oh, so crazy. Can you hear that? If we turn it down, we can hear... You can hear those. Just hear how those kind of... That kind of noisy stuff turns into just a wash. Here we go, almost crazy, weird, like, beautiful resonances building up in that little... And Oh, they've gone. And we've got space now. Oh, there's a lovely bit of digital sizzle there. And then we, above, like, a thousand, obviously that... We looked at Velvet Reverb, that did, what, a thousand... Two thousand samples a second. This has up to nine, up to 10,000, 11,000, 12,000. That's a lovely engine, lovely implementation of this bit of maths. But we're just gonna, it's just going to be so smooth. It's going to be so smooth. But with this as well, I mean, we can do... We can just do like this kind of breakpoint manipulation of the... It goes, it goes crazy, it goes crazy. But there's tons of other stuff in this as well. It's a beautiful bit of madness if you want to explore a different kind of reverb, one that you might never have come across before. Um, look at this, look at AP Verb, would be my recommendation. Um, so yeah, this is a really lovely implementation of Velvet Noise, lots of control, beautiful sounding DSP, just lovely. And it does more than just reverbs, you do weird delays and stuff with it as well. If you look at the... Uh, there's a load of weird octaves up. Craziness. And some, like, not not reverb things. And you can do del basic delays and stuff as well. It's pretty crazy bit of kit, I'll be honest with you. Worth it. I think it would cost me 50 quid or something. Amazing. But... I'm only doing this basically because there was a plugin that came out recently uh, for totally free. Uh, I only saw it on Gearspace. I probably should have put it up on AVR as well if it didn't. I think it actually did get up there. But it was called Nepenthe, which is also, a, I, think it's, I think that's how it's pronounced, but it's also a planet uh, that Riker and Troy lived on uh, for a short while in the distant future of Star Trek. Less of that. Let's move back onto Nepenthe. This is a beautiful, like I say, it's totally free. And the guy, uh, the chap, whoever it was, the person who um, released this, I'll probably end up linking something in the description at some point. Uh, this is another implementation of Velvet Noise, and it's just a different sounding implementation. There's lots of different ways. Uh, I found in, in my research there's different ways, because uh, at... By, by default, the kind of noise distribution is uh, neither trebly nor bassy. It's a flat frequency response. 
and people initially ended up doing more trebly and uh, more trebly sounding um uh velvet noise shapes and then there was a desire as you'd expect to have more uh, less trebly sounding shapes so people developed a dark velvet noise algorithms i think i remember reading about those um and i don't know if this is implemented in here but the guy the chap the person who released this uh said that he used some other special techniques to kind of do you know to, to manage the sound so let's have a listen to it i mean it's lovely it doesn't sound like your classic hall even with treble on full it's still quite dull And you can only reduce the time to, I guess that means half a second, but maybe that is a whole second actually, that would make sense. But it's really, really smooth, it sounds really kind of platey I want to say, but some people will surely object. But it's like it doesn't really sound like a space, it just sounds like... I mean, it does have a depth to it, doesn't it? So, it's lovely and smooth, listen. Like, for a lot of these uh, velvet reverbs, we have to, you know, shape the the actual reverb shape itself like a so if we want it to fade out and on here as well you get the opportunity to kind of describe the level the body which is like the space the level so yeah this is like if you want it to go on forever you can get it to go on forever um if you want it to stop or fade out you can design curves that design that sort of describe the fade out of the impulse but on Nepenthe, it's got its own thing going on. It's just as part of the time equation, so. It's nice. It feels like there isn't a early reflection part. It just feels like the space, a velvet noise, pure space, kind of similar to the velvet machine implementation where there's no pre-stage. You know, there isn't a... Um, there isn't a this there isn't a this bit. We don't have the room early reflections normally in well that I've seen in in these velvet machine devices. But there isn't one in here. There's no pre-stage. It's just hit the space that's been defined with the velvet noise algorithm. Um so it's kind of interesting, but yeah, in, in AP verb that you do have that. So you can shape the shape the room going into the body slash space slash tail reflections, whatever you want to call them to change the way that's received as well. Um, so yeah, there's also a little variation button that changes the it, positions of all the seeds. Um, and it does store the seeds in each of the presets. So that's kind of handy, right? Uh, there you go. I think I've covered everything I wanted to talk about. So that's Velvet Reverbs. It's an interesting new development in the world of reverbs. Uh, so if you like reverbs, Take a look at this little world of velvet reverbs and um, try not to say reverb too much because it sounds really weird. It doesn't sound like a word anymore. It's just like meaningless, much like this whole thing. Enjoy your reverb filled day and uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye.